the latest being putting a red carpet for a murderer, a person who killed the Kenyan people coming into this country, receiving a red carpet and being saluted by our own army. If you see me in the streets, better holler at me. Seeking for a beat, throw them dollars at me. I don't like the feet, take that away from me. You trying to be like me, you couldn't handle my story. But we gon' let you know, we gon' let you know. We gon' let you know, we gon' let you know. What's up, my people? You guys are good? Thank you for coming through, man, and welcome back to yet another episode, man, of Mr. J's reaction. If this is your first time coming through, they call me Jay, man. I'm a Marvel Indian, man. I live in the diaspora, and I draw vlogs every day, man, talking about issues pertaining to Africa, man. Yo, um, today we are going to talk about something real interesting. But before we get started, please do not forget to hit that like button, man. The more likes each of my vlogs get, man, the more YouTube shows my vlogs to a whole lot of people. And I appreciate everybody watching me from North America, Asia, uh, Central America, Latin America, man, yo, Europe, the Caribbeans, we are all together. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we talk about Pan-Africanism, we talk about the collective united force of our African leaders. When we talk about moving as one block and standing as one continent, we talk about the collective understanding of our African leaders that unless we unite, the world is never going to respect Africa. Man, I've been dropping a whole lot of vlogs, man, talking about a whole lot of things that bear on Pan-Africanism. And uh, recently, man, a couple of days ago, man, this great Pan-Africanist leader, man, he goes by the name of uh, Julius Malema, man. Shout out to my South African people, man. Uh, this man has been relentlessly being on the path of ensuring that uh, Motherland is respected. He has made a career out of calling out the BS from the West. This man has stood the time. He is a known nonsensical person when it comes to any African leader who doesn't work with Pan-Africanism in his agendas. Now, nobody is a stranger, if you've been following politics coming out of Africa, nobody is a stranger to who this man is, man. Uh, he has the spirit of Nelson Mandela mixed up with that of Thomas Sankara, coded and spiced with Samore and engineered by the likes of the Fidel Castro, the Che Guevara, you know, you know the whole shebang, shebang. And recently during the lunch of uh, the Pan-Africanist Institute in Kenya, this man went there, he gave a speech and then he torched the current president of the Republic of Kenya. Now think about this, somebody walks into your house and then he gives a speech and then he torches you, your president, and he gets the standing ovation and he gets the applause as a rock star in your own country. I'm not going to talk too much. I'm just going to play it. And then afterwards, man, we are going to talk. I'm going to give you my take. So watch. The latest being putting a red carpet for a murderer. A person who killed the Kenyan people coming into this country, receiving a red carpet and being saluted by our own army. Hello there family. Let us watch Julius Malema in yet another jaw-dropping controversial speech as he goes ballistic and sends shockwaves to Kenyan President William Ruto questioning his loyalty to the Pan-Africanist call. If you're new to the channel, Please do not forget to subscribe as we are currently on track to reach 100,000 subscribers before the end of this year. Now, without further delay, let's watch the full speech. I don't know if President William Ruto means it because he said so many things and I can't locate him these days. 
because the things he said during election and the things he's doing now are two different things. I don't know. Because I heard him saying, we need to do away with the dollar and build our own currency. But his actions are not speaking to anything of doing away with the dollar. The latest being putting a red carpet for a murderer. A person who killed the Kenyan people coming into this country, receiving a red carpet and being saluted by our own army. This is not a Kenyan army. It's not a colonialist army. The Kenyan army is a product of the Mau Mau rebellion. And those who killed our people in the Mau Mau rebellion cannot be saluted by the same army of the children of those who were killed during Mau Mau rebellion. We have a duty to stay true to the cause. We have a duty to remind the king and Britain of what they did to us. Indeed, he shows no remorse. He says this was bad. It shouldn't have happened. But he runs short of, I apologize. I am sorry. He will never say he is sorry. For because he thinks that his race makes him superior. And he's not qualified to apologize to those who are junior to him. We call upon the, the Kenyan government to be firm. And to decide what they want to be. Do they want to be Pan-Africanist? Or do they want to be proponents of neocolonialism? You can't have it both. Only one call must be made. And that call is all Pan-Africanism. It's not easy being a Pan-Africanist. For because the mindset of our people is so colonized. They are going to isolate you. They are going to look at you as if you are a mad person. They are going to look at you as if you are unreasonable. But it is a cause worth pursuing because of the generation that came before us. We don't want uh, visas. We want one currency for Africa. Because our currency, our currency can be more powerful than the pound and the dollar combined because London has got the biggest storage of gold yet they don't have a single smallest mine of gold their economy is based on our minerals and if we safeguard our minerals and protect them and say out of these minerals we are producing a currency that is going to compete internationally we stand a good chance we need African Central Bank. We need African Monetary Zone. We need African military combat. Because these pockets of wars that are happening in Africa are not of our own making. They are sponsored wars so that those who continue to steal our resources can do so uninterrupted as we fight ourselves, amongst ourselves. So, we need a military, a common defense system, the African High Command, that will ensure the stability and security of Africa. We equally need a binding African court to deal with dictators who only exist in Africa to feed their friends and families. Those people must be prosecuted the African way. They've spoken on Palestine. They've spoken on the war between Russia and Ukraine. But I've, I'm still to hear the stand of President William Ruto about the ongoing war that is not covered by anyone in DRC where people are fighting over territorial expansion and plunder of resources and blacks are killing other black people and we pretend that, like, that we don't see. It's important as leaders 
of states and governments to always condemn violence and war, especially if it's barbaric and informed by tribalism and unjustifiable territorial expansions. Before you can speak about other countries, charity begins at home. Let there be peace in DRC. Without peace in DRC, Kenya will never know peace because these rascals are going to learn from those wars in DRC and want to import them into Kenya. You have a duty to stop them there before they come into Kenya. <laughs> Comrades, we will make sure we the struggle of all immigrants, most of whom are economic migrants and asylum seekers in South Africa. We will never. In South Africa, they say to us, if you want to be elected, you must declare war on illegal immigrants. And illegal immigrants, they mean Africans. We have refused as the EFF that we will never declare war on, on any immigrant, illegal or legal, illegal according to whose law. Because if you are illegal, you should have violated a certain law. Which African law did these people violate when they came to this side of Africa? Because they are still in the same territory of Africa. They are at home when they are in South Africa. We wish to tell them we are going to elections next year in South Africa. We wish to reiterate that and we tell them all the time. If they want to elect us on the basis of xenophobia, they can keep their votes. We are not disparate for votes. We are disparate for the unity of Africa and that's what we want to achieve in our lifetime. Remove the visas as an immediate step, and I heard Kenya is going to do that by December. Perhaps I must come back here in December unannounced, so to test if indeed President William Root means exactly what he said, when he said there won't be visas in December. Maybe I must sneak in and test without applying for any visa, and just give them the South African passport and say I'm coming home. Mama, we want to commit in front of you and all the dignitaries who are here and the students that this Pan-African Institute will be supported by the EFF. We will ensure that indeed it has got a home in South Africa. We will not only support it verbally, we will put money into it, we will pay the staff members of the institute will also pay the offices of the institute because we believe that we must speak one language as Africa. We will donate the books here at the university to ensure that every African writer has got his or her book in the Pan-Africanist Institute. Let's all spread the gospel. Indeed, it was not a mistake to launch it here in the rural areas because no one must be left behind. If you can carry on your back the rural communities, you have no any other option to go anywhere except to go to the urban. But if you start from rural, there is no way you can cover the urban. But if you start from the urban, you are going to be reluctant to come to the rural. We are starting here to liberate our people in the rural areas and we're going to the urban to ensure that everybody hears the message. Tell President Ruto that the people of Palestine are what Mau Mau was. Tell President Ruto that the people of South Africa are what Palestinian people are today where our land that get encroached, where our land just get taken, and we get killed on our own land, 
We get tortured on our own land. We get imprisoned on our own land. When we fight, they say we are terrorists. This Nelson Mandela you celebrate for 27 years. He was in prison because he was a terrorist. What crime did he commit which the Palestinians are not committing? His crime was to fight for the liberation of the people of South Africa and the oppressed world all over, including the people of Palestine. It can't be correct that President Ruto, knowing the history of this country and the history of South Africa, comes and tells us that it's with Israelites. Our war is not on Jewish people. Our war is not on pregnant women, Jewish pregnant women. Our war is not on Jewish children. Our war is against a Zionist apartheid state of Israel. And that's what we are fighting. So, if you got money from some Jewish person, we are not fighting that funder of his. We are fighting the state of Israel. We are not fighting individuals. We are fighting the state of Israel. At the age of nine years, the Boers walked into my house and turned everything upside down, stripped my mother naked. When I see what those children of Palestine are going through, I can immediately relate that this is what apartheid looks like. We cannot be pan-Africanist if we can't associate with the oppressed nation. Our pan-Africanism is based on the basis that we are an oppressed nation ourselves. And everywhere else where we see an oppressed person, that person is our sister, that person is our mother, that person is our father, because we are not free until the whole world is free from imperialism and colonialism. I don't know if you'll regret inviting me after this. But my problem is that I tell my truth as is. And I say it to authorities without fear or favor. Till today, no one has ever sued me legally successful. Till today, no one has imprisoned me. Because you can't imprison or sue the truth. The truth will always prevail. Comrades, we must make sure that as we live here, our sympathy is with the oppressed people. Look at Cuba. Its crime was to choose a different economic system to what America has chosen. And then they are under more than 60 years of economic embargo. What did crime did the people of Western Sahara commit against Morocco? We are at the center of speaking the truth as a Pan-Africanist Institute because we've got the ear of the continent and the diaspora and the whole world. And this organization we are launching today, Prof, will live forever and ever because you only speak the truth yourself to power. And you always make us politicians to want to check if indeed we are still on the right track. So an institution established by a person like you, we are guaranteed that it will live for long and it will live for generations to come. That's why we are proud to be here. I was not brought by a plane here. I was not brought by a car here. I was driven by the spirits of those people who were dumped in the oceans. And when they were dumping them in the oceans, their cries are still crying loud till today. They did not dump them in the ocean only. They dumped them chained on their hands and their feet and they could not fight. They, when the sharks were f eating them in those oceans, they could not fight. Even if you know that today I'm going to die. But it is always good to die fighting. 
that you must hold a shark even when you know it's going to swallow me. I must, I must die fighting. Those people who died in the ocean said to me, you ought to arrive there. For because what you guys are going to start there is that which is going to seek reparations for us. As you leave this place and going back to your home, remember the people who died in the plantation, beaten, treated like dogs. Remember all of those slaves that asked for help and they never found help. But you must say to them in spirit, the help has, has arrived. And that help we declare today that will fight the battles of the heroes and heroines of Mau Mau, of Bambata Rebellion, of the slaves. This Pan-Africanist Institute must be at the center of demanding reparations for all the suffering Africans have gone through because of colonialism. We must teach our people that we are not beggars. When we ask for reparation, we are not asking for donation. We are asking for what was stolen from us to be returned so that we can prosper and become a better nation. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, um, what do you think about what this brother said? What do you think about what this Pan-Africanist said? I want you to leave a comment and chime in. And before I go, do not forget, I hope you did hit that like button. For me to you, do keep watching and it's all love and we are going to rise. Peace. Creation, reaction, God. Big up the RB family. Mr. J, I see you. I know some artists don't do this. God bless you and your families.